Hi, I'm Ron Stark, known as the voice of the Inland Empire. We've been on the air for almost 20 years, interviewing and discussing important people, places, and things in the IE. Our show was recently covered by Inland Empire magazine. Check us out on Charter Cable or visit our website at voiceoftheinlandempire.com or on Facebook or YouTube by searching Voice of the Inland Empire. Voice of the Inland Empire is on the road again, and today we are at Behavioral Health for the County of San Bernardino and joined by Veronica Kelly, who is their fairly new director, but not new to this department. Veronica, thank you for inviting us to your lovely abode. Thank you. You know, Veronica, you know, you and I were talking before we started taping, and I think a lot of people have a sense of what your department does, but probably that begins and ends with social work, which is a part of what you do, but you do so much more than that. Right. So I want to spend a few moments uh, getting to know more about what this department does. But first, um, what brought you, because this, this is the, a kind of job that requires a very special person. Not everyone can do the kind of things that you guys do here. What attracted you to this? Well, um, to the field? Yeah. So uh, I was that kid who, um, oldest child in my family, so sort of the parentified child who kind of helped everyone get along. But I also was the kid who everyone came and talked to me about their problems, including my friend's parents would come and talk to me about their problems. And so it was sort of a natural thing. Um, I think I wanted to go into um, pediatrics because I, that's, as a kid, that's what you know, you're a pediatrician, right? Yeah, you either want to be a doctor or a fireman or a police, right. <laughs> right. Um, and I um, really, when I was a candy striper, I, in age 16, I was a candy striper oh, nice. at what uh, hospital? Fountain Valley Community Hospital in Very Orange cool. County. Very cool. And I was the, on the pediatrics ward, and I spent most of my time talking to the kids about their nervousness about being in the hospital than I did passing out their meals and um, stamping charts. And so that kind of made me think that maybe I was more into talking and listening than performing procedures. You're not going to go after my show, are you? <laughs> I might. Yeah, you might. Oh, no. <laughs> what have I done? Why do you think we asked you here today? <laughs> <laughs> well said. Touche. Yeah. And so I went to college and was a psychology major um, and thought that was what I was going to do until the dean of a school of social work from USC came and spoke to our class. And it was like the heavens opened and angels really? sang. And, and I realized I wanted to be a social worker. But did you really have a sense at the time how challenging, personally challenging, that line of work can be? I had some unconscious sense. Um, I come from a family of addiction, and so to me, chaos is kind of normal. So it felt very um, normal for me. It felt natural for me to be in that field. Um, the changes that we've seen, though, in the field of behavioral health, which is mental health and substance use, are exponential. And so I do, do think, like you said, it does take a special temperament to work in this field. And so I think my um, lived experience um, makes it much easier for me. And that really makes a lot of sense. So you decided this was the field that you wanted to go into. And uh, you, I think you said you've been here nine years. Mm -hmm. So tell me that story. How did you get here? Well, I uh, was don't tell in... Me you drove, because <laughs> I'll just slap you right on air. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Orange County. I actually I live in Orange County, and I drive 70 miles one way every day to work. So Ouch. that really is a testament to how amazing this county is as far as an employer and the amazing work we do at this department. Um, I was uh, what's called the cultural competency officer for, oh. for Orange okay. County. I did that for 10 years. Um, my mom is from the Philippines. I was born in Japan. My dad's Irish, so... Um, and I so look like this. So you're just very confused. <laughs> <laughs> so I really know what it's like to um, live with diversity. And um, when my um, 
my younger my youngest sister uh, was 16 she had attempted suicide and my mother and I and her went to um, a psychology appointment and the psychologist wouldn't speak to my mother she would ask me to tell my mother assuming my mother didn't speak English uh, just an assumption right and so all of those those layers of bias and discrimination really got to me and got me thinking that maybe not everyone receives help in the same way and so that really brought me towards culture and so I started in Orange County did some cultural competency work there for 10 years then I came to this county in 2009 as the cultural competency officer okay so you started in this county in right. that same realm right and so that's just figuring out how to provide services to people in a way that makes sense mm -hmm. to them and I did that for about three years and I promoted to a deputy director and then the assistant director and was appointed in October of 2016 to the director Wow but then, oh, but that was here in this department. Right. Okay, so you started out in the cultural competency mm -hmm. for this for, for department. For this department. Got it, and then, and then worked your way up. That, right. That's amazing. Well, we're gonna take a, a little break, but when we come back, I really wanna dive into the full range of services and offerings okay. that you have here, because really there's more here than, than meets the eye. Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. So don't go away. The best part of this conversation is yet to come. Hi, I'm Ron Stark, known by many as the voice of the Inland Empire, but I also own one of the fastest growing, most creative ad agencies in the region, Voice Marketing. Check us out online. We work with clients ranging from the County of San Bernardino to the star of the hit TV show Hoarders. We specialize in both business to business and business to consumer marketing. If you'd like more customers, call or email me personally and let's talk. We are back and coming to you from the Department of Behavioral Health for the County of San Bernardino with its director, Veronica Kelly. Uh, been here for nine years in this position for about a year and a half. And I just, there's nothing better than that story of someone starting at one point and then working their way up to the top. That is just a testament. But what I wanted to ask you is tell us a little bit about what your department does and all of the different areas that you guys oversee. Okay, so it's a lot. Okay, um, well, we've got... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the Department of Behavioral Health, we provide mental health services and substance use disorder services to people who have Medi-Cal, so the poor population of this county, and people who have no insurance. We provide services to children, so we have programs actually that start from zero to five, and you might be thinking, what could possibly be happening with the child zero to five but we have had children as young as three who've expressed uh, suicidal thoughts and or actually maybe have been victims of abuse right absolutely and so they have a lot of post-traumatic stress symptoms mm -hmm. um, and so we address those children and their families we work with serious emotionally disturbed children so if a child has attention deficit disorder and their pediatrician can treat them then the pediatrician will treat them but if it becomes a little bit more intense, we step in and we provide the therapy and the support to the families. That's we, nice, especially for these families who otherwise couldn't afford. Right. And now you've just got a, a runaway train wreck. Exactly. And we want to prevent diseases from um, continuing. And we want to make sure that if a child is already exhibiting some symptoms of a mental illness, that we can stabilize that and treat it early. What we know is with some of our more serious mental illnesses like schizophrenia, the sooner we get in and provide treatment, the better the outcome. Because someone who's not treated for an illness such as that can actually start to lose IQ points. They oh, are really? impacted further in that they're not able to get a job, so they're not able to have any sort of sustainability for them when they get older. So we have the whole continuum from children and youth. We work. So how do you get, I'm sorry, but how do, how do you get referrals of these people from doctors or since most people, I'm guessing, don't know that you're here and what you offer, how do they find you? Well, we get referrals from everywhere, from our hospitals, from private uh, physicians, from our managed care partners. So if you have Medi-Cal, your physical health care is provided by either Inland Empire Health Plan or Molina Health Plan. Mm -hmm. And so we have a relationship with the managed care plans right. that they get a kid who they're seeing for the flu, who's exhibiting other symptoms, and then they refer them directly to us. But law enforcement comes, uh, the school systems know us very well. We partner with school systems. We know that children can't come to an appointment at 10 in the morning 
learning because they're in school. Mm -hmm. So we work with community-based providers to provide services to children during school hours, and then we can help them after school um, at our family resource centers that can help provide additional resources for their family. And that, that was my next question. Is this, uh, along with helping the individual, a kind of whole family holistic approach as well? Yes, yeah, because what you can't do is just treat one portion of a family and put them back in the same family that might be still grappling with some of the same um, obstacles. And is it just young people or are you guys working with all age ranges? Yeah, cradle to grave. We do the entire continuum. So children, uh, youth, uh, what we call transitional age youth, those are kids who are from 16 to 25. They have a very different um, perspective on the world and also their illnesses, the trajectory is a little bit different. They're not exactly children, but they're certainly not fully right. grown adults. And so we don't want to stop at 18, like when you see your pediatrician, and then boot them over to an adult system because they aren't mature enough yet for right. that system. Unfortunately, in the best of cases, most of them right. aren't mature enough yet. <laughs> right. And these, these, these kids have additional <laughs> hurdles on top of that. Right. So what about the case of someone who has an addiction and thinks they're finally at a place where they're ready to deal with it and they're low income, do they just show up and knock on your door? They do. They do. We have um, a assessment center that's open. You can just do walk-ins. Um, we also have appointments where we can have folks come in and we see them with our clinicians, our alcohol and drug counselors, our licensed clinicians, and physicians. For a substance use disorder, it is really a very holistic approach to treatment. Uh, about 90% of everyone who has an addiction also has a comorbidity, so another physical health problem. So the folks who come in to see us for their addictions usually have something like um, hepatitis C, diabetes, they might have liver uh, issues, and many of the folks we treat are women who are pregnant and or parenting. And so we offer all those services. For youth, we have youth services specific to addiction. And so we can have people be in, um, youth be in residential treatment facilities where we can get them out of the, the neighborhood where their dealer is, put them in some place where they can learn proper skills. Now, and are these residential facilities the counties? We contract for those facilities. Okay. Yeah. So we have those uh, throughout the, the county for our youth. We also have the whole continuum of care for our adults. We have, um, we treat people when, when, when they reach adult we deal with a serious and persistent mental illness. So you have to be in a really chronic state for you to come see us. So if you have a mild depression because your dog died, you would go and see your regular provider for, for uh, physical health care, and they can treat that. But if it's 10 years now that your dog died and you aren't sleeping. And you never really even had one. <laughs> especially if you never had one, you would come see us, especially. Perfect. People who have delusions like that, yes. So if it's very severe, you would come see us and we would provide services. We do outpatient treatment for that. Um, we can help people if they need housing, if they have a serious and persistent mental illness. I really like to talk about it like the way we look at diabetes. We have diabetes where you can control diabetes with diet mm -hmm. and exercise. And more. Right? And so that's mild. Moderate would be if you're on an oral medication for your diabetes. So that's moderate. Severe is when now you've, you've exhausted those and your diabetes is still not in control and you're now on injectable insulin. Mm -hmm. We're the insulin you're people for level. mental illness, right? So how big of a staff, because this county is, is bigger than a third of the states in the country, how big of a staff must you have? We have 1,300 staff. Wow. We serve 60,000 unduplicated clients a year. That means we've counted them once wow. for actual treatment and about an additional 200,000 for a crisis service or for educational opportunities. And then do you have various locations throughout the county? We How do. does that work? We do. We have a mental health clinic in the town of Needles. And we serve about 400 folks there. We have people who live in the town of Trona that we are also serving. Uh, we have clinics in the low desert, uh, in the high desert, and then here, East Valley, West Valley regions. So we have about 300 different contracts that we utilize to help us provide services in about 13 county-run clinics. 
Wow. And then where we're sitting today is your administrative, administrative offices. Right. So I'm assuming you don't, you're not seeing clients or patients here. Usually not, but people will show up. They see behavioral health on our, you know, on the building, so they'll come on in. So we have that whole continuum about patient care for mental health. We do inpatient care. So if somebody needs a higher level of care, their medication might be off or they're having the first signs of a psychotic break. We facilitate getting them into hospitals. We contract with a number of hospitals. And then our county hospital, Arrowhead Regional Medical mm -hmm. Center, provide care. We also contract with some state hospitals, like Patton State Hospital. And those are for people who really need to have supervision, uh, mm -hmm. who really need help with their medication, and other community providers that provide lower level of care, step-down care from the hospital. Wow. That's, it's, it's, it's amazing what you manage. I mean, I know that you can't do it alone and you don't, but still, when I think about the sheer volume of staff that you've got and all the locations, and then you've got that long drive to and fro every day. <laughs> wow. So, Veronica, if someone wants more information about the services you all provide, either for themselves or someone else that they may know, is there an online resource? There is. So we have our uh, Department of Behavioral Health website. We also have an access line that's available 24 hours a day, and we can provide uh, information about our services in English and Spanish and any other language that a person might need. And to find the website, I'm guessing they can just Google behavioral health, San yes, Bernardino and, County? And, uh, yes. <laughs> and Amira can provide that information to you <laughs> off camera. <laughs> So we'll make sure that that's on the screen and everybody can see it. Um, well, thank you for taking a few moments of what is clearly a very busy schedule for you with all that you guys do. And really, above all else, thank you for caring, because I can tell this is not just a job for no. you. This is a passion. Yeah, well, thank you. So thank, thank you for you this for opportunity. That. You're welcome. Don't go away. We have more to come. We'll be right back. What's Upland visits today with the local baker, and we are joined by Amy, and Lewis is in the back preparing the wonderful delicacies. So Amy, you guys have been here for like a really long time. Yes, we have been here since 2006, so it's a little over 12 years already. Nice, nice. And tell us a little bit about the local baker. The local baker is a family-owned um, cafe. Um, we make almost everything from scratch. Wow. We have breakfast, we have lunch, we have dinner, we do cakes, and we do caterings as well. And I think I think most people, mostly because of your name, tend to think of you as just a baker, but you're not. Um, I've come in here for breakfast. Um, I've come in here to get a, an assortment of items. If I have a meeting at my office in the morning, you have lunches. Uh, your pizza and spaghetti is to die for. And you guys do something, I think it's Tuesday nights? We have a special on Tuesday. It all depends on what Lewis have in mind, but you can think of anything from Korean barbecue. Uh, we have some pulled pork, we have corned beef, and we're creating a whole lot of menu every Tuesday. We call it the secret menu, just ask. And, and what time does Tuesday night dinner start and end? It's actually our menu is open almost from morning till night. So okay. if you want to have lunch and dinner and dinner and lunch and breakfast at dinner, as long as Lewis is in the kitchen, which Okay, he is so if I day. came here Tuesday for lunch, mm -hmm. I could have your secret dinner? Yes. Oh, okay, very cool. <laughs> and then what are your hours? Our hours are from 7 to 7, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday at 8 to 2. Nice. Now, talk to me a little bit about catering, because you, again, don't just do pastries and sweets. You mm -hmm. can cater virtually anything. We can do between um, 50 to 200 catering, um, depending on the dates, but definitely it is doable. As long as you give me a, a heads up, we can take care of it for you. All right, so you're the best pastries in town. You have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes. I, I love your, your bagels and cream Thank cheese, personally. You. Thank you. Um, and, you know, for anyone that's in the area, around, and there's a lot of great restaurants here in Old Town, mm -hmm. but if they haven't had dinner here, they've got to check you out. They have to come down here and check us out, definitely. All right, Amy, and do you guys have a website or a Facebook page? We do have a Facebook. It's under Local Baker and Cafe, just like us. All right, yeah. 
So visit them on Facebook, give them a like, and anytime you're in Old Town Upland, come on down, check them out. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and you can have dinner for breakfast, breakfast for dinner, or lunch. Can you have lunch for lunch? Oh, heck yeah. You can do that too. Okay. I just wanted to be sure. So from the local baker, we say come on down and give them a try. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ron Stark. I own one of the fastest growing, most creative ad agencies in the region, Voice Marketing. Check us out online at voicemktg.com. We work with clients ranging from the county of San Bernardino to the star of the hit TV show Hoarders. Call or email me personally at the phone number or email address below and check out my TV show, Voice of the Inland Empire, on Charter Cable and online. We are here at Geno Viva's Fine Mexican Food and Grill with the owner, Hilario Rodriguez. And Hilario, our viewers probably know you from many different places before you opened up here. Would that be correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, luckily, we have uh, one for too many other places in this beautiful town. And now, the Lord put us here in this place. We, uh, our, our goal is to, uh, you know, keep continue to bring job, bring thousands of people to this town, and thanks to our city people, mayor, to help us to remodel the, our, our place. And uh, our, our mission and goal is to, to bring back what we get from our community. So please uh, stop by and see us here at the And you know, I want to talk about what the city did. Your, your restaurant was nice from day one, and you guys were almost successful overnight. But the city came in, and they did a complete facelift of the front of your restaurant, including a beautiful patio that we're standing on now. Yes, that's correct. Uh, it used to be a different face, and now you guys notice I'm a different. It looks nice. You guys need to come and check us. Uh, we have our specials, our breakfast, lunch, dinner. And I'll tell you, during the summer or any nice day, I love sitting out here on the patio. You see all the activity going on in town. It's a beautiful day. Uh, you bring the food out. It's, it's just awesome. Now, I also wanted to talk to you about uh, Cinco de Mayo. You guys do something really special every year for that day, I'm guessing. Yes, and, and uh, yes, we are trying to plan to do something about it. Uh, if not, if, there are, if, if it's not going to be outside in the back, big parking lot, we're still going to celebrate it inside of the Vivas restaurant. So come and see us for, for uh, the big celebration of Cinco de Mayo. We're going to have mariachi uh, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I can't think of a better place to be for, for um, Cinco de Mayo. I almost said St. Patrick's Day. Although this is a good place to be for St. Patrick's Day too. But a better day to be on Cinco de Mayo because you guys really do it right. Now you mentioned earlier that you guys have food specials. You know, every day you have something. I, I come in and for lunch and first thing I ask you is what's the special? But I, what some people may not know is you guys also do catering. Yes, yes, we do caterings. We, uh, we uh, do almost everything for any events, weddings, quinceañeras, uh, any parties, birthday, uh, whatever you guys need. We're here for, for the events. So if I wanted to do a big taco party, you could help me with that? Because your tacos are the best. Yes, of course. Yes. I love it. So whether you're looking to just come in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or you have an event you want catered, or a fun place to party on Cinco de Mayo, I would say Geno Viva's Fine Mexican Food and Grill with Hilario Rodriguez is definitely the place. Hilario, thank you. Well, thank you very much. And, and we'll see everyone everybody. here. Yes, please, stop by. Welcome to our newest segment, 
that we proudly call What's Upland. And in this segment, every week, we're going to meet a different business from Old Town Upland and learn about who they are, what they do, and what they have to offer. And I am thrilled that our first visitor is Nikki Voskarichian, and you and your husband, Neil, are the owners of Rescue Brew. That's right. And it is so cool having a microbrew right here in town. And we, I don't know, I shouldn't say we, but I know I waited <laughs> with bated breath for it to open. And my employees did too, because I told them once you opened, I'd take them all there. So they, nice. were, yes. they were excited about it. Um, but the name, um, Rescue Brew, tell me a little bit about that. Well, it started out, um, I had a, been involved with animals my whole life. Um, so I wanted to incorporate that somehow, some way. Um, and the first thing I came up with, I was going to make dog biscuits from the spent grains. Uh, left over after my husband brews. What else to do with it? Um, so I decided to do that, and all the proceeds from that go to the Upland Shelter. So just that alone, and you know, and I've been in there and I've seen those. Yeah. And I thought how cool you've got, but I didn't realize that those were a byproduct yes. of your byproduct. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what other things do you guys contribute so to? So we um, also try to help out. Uh, we want to give back to the community. So we had incorporated into giving back some of the proceeds from the, the beer and the merchandise um, to our Upland PD, um, oh, our fire nice. department, um, anything we can do, you know, to give back in and some way. And, you know, way. that's great because given the kind of national level bashing Yes. that these incredibly brave souls have, have, have gotten. I think it's so nice that there's a business that says, hey, we love you, we mean it, and we want to give back and help. Yes. So every, if you're a fireman, policeman, uh, in the military, you get 10% off every beer every time you come in. Nice. Um, we do patches, bring your patch too, because we collect patches um, for each, you know, rank, uh, department. Um, so, yeah, we're, we want to recognize and give them the recognition they deserve. And then, as if that's not enough for us, you know, regular folks, yeah. you guys are dog friendly. Yes, we are. And we also uh, hold um, every other month a pet adoption at the end, last Sunday of every month. So oh, that way nice. we help out either a shelter or a rescue, um, just depending on which month it falls on. Yeah. It is so cool because I've got a little Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we can walk into town, and yeah. um, I can get a, a beer. He usually gets a pint, um, and no, he doesn't. <laughs> but he does usually get one I of your treats. I wanted to make some doggy beer. <laughs> that would be so cool—a little bowl, doggy yes. beer. Yeah, just do near beer. Um, now I want to spend the last minute or so. Every time, and and I'm not a beer drinker. I don't dislike beer, but I'm a wine guy. Yeah. But the thing that hit me the minute I, you have so many different choices yes. that even someone like me that isn't a beer aficionado every time i have found a beer that i have loved and i really like that taster thing that you guys right. do yes our flight yes you get uh, six four ounce tasters so that way you can sample of quite a few um yeah we try to give a little bit of everything so i'm sure you'll find what you like <laughs> and your range goes from very light Mm -hmm. uh, blonde type beers to some very dark, robust beers. Oh yes, our stout and our porter. We have a 10.4 uh, stout, which is 10.4 ABV. So it's it's up there. It's a it's a strong drink, but it's very good. Everything is very tasty. Uh, well, I love it, and I encourage everyone. And right now, you don't have um, a restaurant but you encourage people to visit any of the restaurants in town. Absolutely. Um, we also have a few of the restaurants, Polly's Pizza and Daddy O's, will deliver down there. So oh, we, they'll actually deliver? They will deliver it. We work that out with them before we open, so that way, you know, we try to help our community. We want everybody to work together and, you know, support each other. So, I mean, I can't think of anything much because I love Polly's Pizza. It's yeah. like the best pizza I have <laughs> yes, ever had in the world. Very good. You're welcome, Polly. <laughs> But to have them bring down a pizza, yes. some friends, some beer, yes. is there anything much better than that? No. <laughs> I don't think no. so either. <laughs> so Nikki, if someone wants to know what's going on, when and where and how at Rescue Brew, 
How can they do that? Um, you can visit us at our website, www.rescuebrewingco.com. Um, we have a Facebook page, Rescue Brewing Company. Uh, our Instagram is Rescue Brewing Co. And we also have a large calendar in our location <laughs> that will update you on everything going on as well. So if you don't know what's going on at Rescue Brew, <laughs> it's your fault, not yes. theirs. So check out the website, Facebook page. Uh, I love to go there and hang out. And if you see me, come by and say hello. We'd love for you to come by. Nikki, thank you so much. Thank you for having us.